Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her, and she has served her term, and her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. And uneven ground shall become level, the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings, Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up. Do not fear, says the cities of Judah. Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd, and he will gather the, gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it was written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out and were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with, the wa with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. For 39 chapters, Isaiah has prophesied doom and gloom. Our passage for today indicates the doom has occurred. In fact, Many towns in Judah have been destroyed. Jerusalem has been sacked and the temple destroyed. The citizens have been hauled off into captivity in Babylon. By the rivers of Babylon, they sat down and wept. With no temple to worship in and stripped of their religious symbols, they had only their memories and tears. Perhaps we may find ourselves connecting to their situation Certainly not to the same degree, but most of us have been unable to worship in our familiar sanctuary for nine months. Some have been able to 
be in their churches, but even so they have not been able to sing familiar hymns. Here we are on the second Sunday of Advent, absent from our building, missing Holy Communion, missing the passing of the peace and one another's physical presence, missing the lighting of the candle for the second Sunday of Advent. That candle is the candle of peace. Perhaps peace is coming to us, even in our isolation. God spoke words of comfort to the people of Judah. God can speak words of comfort to us, even in our isolation. God can speak words of comfort to those who have lost loved ones due to the pandemic of COVID. God can speak comfort to those suffering from COVID. God can speak comfort to those of us who are not able to be with family and other loved ones during this season of the year when being with those we love so much is so important. God can speak comfort to those who have lost their jobs and other who are in financial distress. God can speak comfort to African Americans who desperately yearn for justice and change and an end to police brutality. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people. Those opening words of Handel's Messiah are the words that we all long to experience on this second Sunday of Advent. Into Israel's darkest days, a voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Salvation and restoration are on the way. Just as God spoke creation into existence, God speaks salvation into existence. God speaks of everlasting promise that does not fail. God is coming into the wilderness into the most barren places of our lives, God is coming to transform the places in our lives where life seems hopeless. God is coming to transform that hopelessness into fertile ground. Israel's message was for Isaiah's time. In today's Gospel reading, John the Baptist reclaims God's news of hope for the people of his day. The author of Mark claimed it as hope for the early church. And each generation over the ages finds new hope by reclaiming this message of salvation and restoration into the most dire and life-threatening circumstances of our world and our country and our communities. The Spirit of God speaks hope to us even in 2020. It is important to remember we are in, that we are in community with one another. In this time, we cannot assemble together. It is very important to remember that. It is important not to give in to the fear that drives some into deeper isolation. We cannot give in to the fear that drives some to build walls. We need each other. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together. Not alone, not separately, but together. Not some people, but all people. It is for all to see and it is already manifesting even if we do not see it. Vaccines are on the way and will begin to be administered within days. New leadership is coming to the highest office in the land that holds promise for more compassion and inclusivity and shepherd-like concern for all Americans and even those who are not Americans, those immigrants in our midst. A federal judge has ruled that the current administration must restore DACA 
the program that President Obama initiated, which gave quasi-legal status to immigrants who entered the U.S. illegally as children. To stand with Jesus, we must stand with these children because Jesus was an illegal immigrant to Egypt. Jesus stands with all who are stripped of home, who are stripped of dignity, who have had their resources stripped away. John the Baptist's message of repentance is a call to let go of those attitudes and those things that would hold us back from receiving Jesus' message of new life. Privilege is one of those things that is so very difficult for us to let go of. Yet, if we have it, it can stand in our way. I came across something that I wrote on Facebook two years ago that reminds us of how only Jesus can fill our emptiness, perhaps through one another at times, but Jesus is the one who directs that love. He was born into a world which made no, no room for him. He made room for all those who would come to him. The world decided there was no room for him or the things he did. They thought they put him out of the world. He came back early one morning to fill the world, but only the empty can be filled. He is on his way and every valley shall be filled. Amen. The prayers of the people. In joy at the nearness of Christ, let us offer our prayers to God saying, Lord, hear our prayer. May the power of God's holy presence clear a path through the rubble of broken lives and hearts to make our world and all of us a new creation. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May our gracious God be always for us a shepherd to console and comfort us, to nourish our deep hungers and to make us live in peace forever. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May we come to find in the desert of our lives the gift of forgiveness and the waters of a new Jordan that bring cleansing refreshment. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the God of John the Baptist and our God continue to raise up holy prophets in our midst who will tell the good news of saving rescue for all people. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the God who is our comfort hear the cries of all in need, especially for all those on our prayer list. And for all those who have lost loved ones due to COVID. And for all those currently suffering through COVID. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the God who is our future and the gift of Jesus Christ hold us always in the embrace of faithful love. And bring us to new heavens and a new earth. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Recall us in our baptism, O Lord, and hear the cries for ourselves and for the whole world. For, for we pray in the name of the one who came, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.
Comfort, comfort ye my people, speak ye peace, us, saith our God. Comfort those who sit in darkness, mourn beneath their sorrows, Lord. Speak ye to Jerusalem of the peace that waits for them. Tell them that her sins I cover and her warfare now is over. Hark the voice of one that crieth in the desert far and near, calling us to new repentance, since the kingdom now is here. Oh, that warning cry obey, now prepare for God away. Let the valleys rise to meet him, and the hills bow down to greet him.